Good. Next question then. You have two coins. A normal fair coin with heads on one side and tails on the other. And a double-headed coin with heads on both sides. You pick a coin randomly and then toss it five times. And you observe a head five times. Knowing this, what is the probability that you have picked the double-headed coin? Laying out the probabilities of the outcomes obtainable with the two types of coins. For the normal coin, the probability of heads and tails are identical at 0.5 or half as expected for a normal fair coin. For the double-headed coin, since there is only one outcome of heads possible, the probability of that occurring must be 1, hence a 0 for the outcome of tails. Now, because these probabilities are dependent on the coin chosen, or to be more precise, they are conditioned on the coin chosen, these probabilities should then be conditional probabilities. The probability that we have picked a double-headed coin given that a head was obtained five times when flipping this randomly chosen coin, this is clearly an application of Bayes' theorem. Here, we are modifying our prior estimate of some outcome, in this case getting a double-headed coin, with some scaling coefficient to obtain a posterior estimate of the probability of this outcome. And this posterior estimate reflects the effect of the new information, and that is what the scaling coefficient is for. It is meant to incorporate this new information into our prior estimate to obtain a posterior estimate. Using Bayes' theorem, the solution to the problem is thus the following equation. The probability of getting the double-headed coin, given that we have obtained five hits on our flips, is equal to the probability of getting five hits on our flips, conditioned on using a double-headed coin, divided by the probability of getting five hits in general, and then this fraction is then multiplied by our prior, the probability of getting the double-headed coin. Now, let's address the easy parts, the easy segments of this equation. This would be segments 3 and segments 1. So segment 3, the probability of getting a double-headed coin. This is just our prior, and because we only have two coins, a normal fair coin and a double-headed coin, therefore the probability of getting a double-headed coin is just 1 over 2. Now, segment 1, the probability of getting 5 hits condition on using the double-headed coin. Because these are 5 flips, 5 independent flips, this is just the probability of getting a hit condition or using the, du the double-headed coin multiplied 5 times. So raised to the power of 5. And from our previous table, we know that the probability of getting hits on a double-headed coin is definitely 1 because there's only one outcome. So it's 1 raised to the power of 5, giving us 1. Now, for the sake of completeness, let's just calculate the probability of getting 5 hits using the normal coin because, well, who knows, we might use it. It might come in handy later. So the probability of getting 5 hits using a normal coin, condition on the normal coin, is just similarly, similarly, the probability of getting hits on a single flip of the normal coin raised to the power of 5. From the previous table, this would be half raised to the power of 5, giving us 1 over 32. Look, I get it. Preparing for corn interviews is tiring, doing hours of practice questions. So take a break by learning about my experience interviewing for quant rules in London so you don't repeat my mistakes and hopefully land your dream quant job by following the link in the top right. Now back to the question. For segment 2, the probability of getting 5 hits. The probability of getting 5 hits is the probability of getting 5 hits with a normal coin plus the probability of getting 5 hits with the double-headed coin. And that's it. That's just it, because there is no other outcome involving 5 hits. There's no other way, right? You can only either use the normal coin or the double-headed coin. In more mathematical terms, the probability of the outcomes of 5 hits intersected with that of drawing a normal coin, similarly for the second term. 5 probability of getting 5 hits intersected with the probability of drawing a double-headed coin. Using the laws of conditional probability on the top right, the terms are then refactored into the following products, all of which you will notice we already have the values for. Filling in these values, bada bing bada boom, we get that the probability of getting 5 hits in general 
is 33 over 64. Now, bringing all the pieces together, bada bing bada boom, this gives us the probability of getting a double-headed coin, given that we have flipped five hits, being 0 0.96 or a 96% probability. At this point, the interviewer may now ask you, does this set of results make sense? Why or why not? Starting from our prior estimate of getting a double-headed coin being 0 0.5, by incorporating this new information using Bayes' theorem, we have now obtained a posterior estimate for this outcome, which is 0 0.96. And you will notice this represents a substantial increase in our estimate prior to posterior. And the results do make sense. Why? Simply because the new information is much more probable with a double-headed coin. So the new information mean being flipping five hits using a coin. So this is definitely much more probable with a double-headed coin because it, it's guaranteed compared to a normal fair coin. Hence, the posterior estimate is revised upwards to reflect this increased confidence that a double-headed coin was indeed the one that was randomly chosen. At this point, the interviewer says, good. Now, what if instead of one normal coin and one double-headed coin, there are now 499 normal coins and one double-headed coin? How would the probabilities change then? To answer that question, click the video on the right.